Welcome to St. Paul TV, a production of the Media and Technology Ministry of St. Paul AME Church. The vision of our ministry is to build upon the whole person by providing theologically sound biblical teaching, effective worship, commitment to family, and an emphasis on understanding personal purpose. Our church school begins at 9.30 on Sunday morning. Worship service begins at 10.45. We have Bible study every Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Thanks for stopping by and enjoy a word from God.
go through down here. Yeah, shit. We know the cross is gonna take care of all of you. Psalms 51, verses 1 through 15. Psalms 51, verses 1 through 15. Scripture says, Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stains of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my shameful deeds. They haunt me day and night. Against you and you only have I sinned. I have done this evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the heart. So you can teach me to be wise in my inmost being. Purify me from my sins and I'm clean. If you wash me, I'll be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You've broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create me a clean heart. Oh God, renew a right spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me again the joy of your salvation. Make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to the sinner, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O oh God, who saved. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. And verse 15 says, God, if you unseal my lips, he says, then I'll praise you. If you unseal my lips, O oh Lord, that I may praise you. The title of today's word is put that on your ringtone. Put that on your ringtone. Now, some folk might be lost right now, so let me make sure I make, make it clear what I'm talking about. On all these phones that we have, everybody got all these different, all these different ringtones. And and, and, and and most people they 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 one day they 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 they'll choose a ringtone that, that, that gets their attention. It, it's a sound that gets their attention, a, a sound that, that, that lets them know that that's, that's their phone that's ringing. And a lot of time it also matches their personality also. And so when you when you when you listen to the it, it gets my attention, but it also kind of matches my personality. Now because I know that 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 that, that some of us still trying to get them. I, I, I started to make a point. I said, well, I, I can, maybe I can get some folk to share their ringtones at the beginning of the sermon so you can see the different ringtones. But I know some of us still trying to get there, and so some of y'all that's not my age, y'all might have two live crew or something, something like that. I'm so I, I don't want that, and, and there's, some, there, there, there's some, some muddy waters might be in there, and some of y'all young folk got I can't even call the name of the stuff that you all might have on there. And so instead of being embarrassed by some of the ringtone, but let's just everybody understand the concept. Well, understand the concept. It, it gets the attention, and it kind of also matches my personality. But I, I, it, it lets me know that my phone is ringing. That's my phone. That's not somebody else's phone. That's my phone. Now, here in this story, David, King David, he makes this plea to God in response to his mess with Bathsheba. I can't promise you that you will never find yourself 
in a self-inflicted mess. Uh, but I will tell you that if you respond in the right way, you can come out the mess. Some of us, we, 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 we have some mistakes that, some stuff that we in is nobody else's fault. We can't go blame it on the devil. We made some decisions and got our own selves in some mess. But you know, we're not always stuck in that mess. It's based on how we respond as to how quick we can come out of the mess and how many scars can be totally erased from the mess. But we have to respond in the right way. I got a feeling that there's some folk under the sound of my voice that found themselves in self-inflicted messes. Oh, yes. Well, there's some folk that's acting real holy right now. That oh, they, they, they in the late now. I ain't never. Oh, yeah. I ain't never in there. It was somebody else. Well, no, just take back a little bit deeper. Put a little more thought into it. There's some mess that you've done that creates a mess in your life. There's some decisions that you've made. I, I know you've been an officer in the church. Amen. I know you taught Bible study in Sunday school. And I know all on your car you got little tags. Jesus is my pilot. So I, I know, I know you got crosses. You got tattoos with crosses and Jesus stuff on. I, I know, I know you own it. You speak in tongues, I know, I know. You shout, you dance, you, 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 you all that. God, but, 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 come on, let's just be real. Let's be that quick, quick playing around now. Let's be real. You made some mistake. It's got you in some mess. Yeah, God cleaned it up. A lot of folks might not even saw it because God came in quick and made it right for you. But let's just go ahead and be real. Well, we just gonna be ain't nobody else's, but it's just us inside the church and those downstairs looking at it on the TV. But it's just us. Amen. Nobody else outside the St. Paul campus hears this except for the folks on YouTube. That that's it. That's it. Nobody else. Nobody else hears it. It's just us. And let's just go ahead and be honest that you made some mistakes. Amen. And if you hadn't, God bless you. But I made enough for both of us. And verse 1, King David pleads for mercy. Mercy, see, when you plead for mercy, you have, you, you have a point to where you, you, you can't be arrogant. You already know I'm wrong. I know what the punishment should be, but right now I'm just going to see if you can have mercy on me. I know what I deserve, but if it's possible, can you have mercy on me? And so, and, and Bert, this is the king now. This is King David. He, he's the king over the whole nation. The most powerful man in the country. And after his mistake, and after he saw that, that even as powerful as he is, as much influence as he had, that God has ultimate power and authority. And God broke him down. Yeah. And so after being broke down, and, and, and brothers, some brothers really need to listen to me. Because see, like a lot of times sisters will go ahead and women, women will come to God and you know they'll try, try it out. They'll they'll hang around, even though they're not really committed yet, they'll still hang around the church and try it out. But fellas, come on, Robert. Whew, fellas gotta get knocked on our back. We we got to, we got there can't be no more options left. We look around and we you, I got some brothers that's agreeing with me. We we We'll try everything. I, it got to be something else other than Jesus that I can. And then once we find ourselves laid flat on our back and nowhere else to go, the only way we can look is up. Then we finally say, Lord, I yield. I yield. I yield. This King David. King David, a strong man, a warrior. King David did not flat on his back. King David pleads for mercy. He says, have mercy on me, O God. He says, because as ignorant as I get sometimes, I got enough sense to know that you have, have unfailing love. There's nothing, as long as I'm still breathing, 
Man might say it's the worst thing in the world. But there's nothing that I can do as long as I still have breath in my body that you don't love me enough to help me get beyond and get back in the house. Y'all remember the story about the prodigal son? Oh, Lord have mercy. This boy had it all. Boy had it all. He was raised right. He had everything right in his hand, but he, he started smelling himself. Man. And he wanted to go out and try his own thing. There's some folk feeling me right now. Went and tried his own thing. Well, you know you were raised right. You knew the right way, but you went and tried. Sometimes you got to testify yourself. And the prodigal son got out there and left all the goodness and all the stuff that he had and went out there and tried it himself and found himself. This is Jew now. They don't mess with pigs. He found himself eating with the pigs. I mean, he had gone lower than low. And, and, and he found himself down there eating with pigs, and then he came to himself. What in the world? I'm out here smoking crack. I'm, I'm, out, here, I'm out here giving my body up to folk. I'm, I'm out here, I'm out here just, just, just belittling myself. I'm out here making my granddaddy and grandma and mom. Out here acting like a clown in the streets cussing. The lost I, the kind of stock I come from, I let the enemy trick me. Because he's the master of deception. Yes. Folk don't just jump out there in the foolishness. Folk get lured out. They don't think it's, it's that bad. I remember I always said, I, 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 I was a little friend growing up. I, I was the last one you ever would have thought would have smoked some weed. I was, I was a preacher boy a whole bunch of times. Mama, daddy, grandparents, aunts, uncles. I was the last one. They would do all that stuff and I wouldn't even come around. But like the part of the summer when I went off of college, I still don't smoke no weed, but went ahead and started drinking a little bit. And then, but when they pull out the weed, I would touch that now. I'm, I'm just, I just drink now. I just, but it got past the little stuff, and then they say you be 20, 20, and just, it got, it got when some don't, if you don't know about it, just say thank you, God. Just say thank you, God. Say, it's, it's a demon. It's a demon. It's a demon. It's a demon. You don't even want to know about it. Yeah, if you know about it and you hear it, just say thank you, God. That's, that's mercy. And 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 next thing you know, you try this and you try that and you try that, then next thing you know, they're going from thin ones to, to you're going from paper to big cut cigars open and and, and and you're getting bad, getting bad. You don't folk don't just jump out there in the mess, you just that, that we, we allow the enemy to trick us into stepping a little over a little bit. A little, then the next thing we know I was in my father's house, and I had everything, and now I'm in a pig pen. Preach, preach. What in the midst of the pig pen? Looked at him and said, "What? My father owns all of that, and I'm down here. And somebody right now needs to say what." So they feel good about themselves. 
But it says daddy saw him. Not the brother. No matter what the brother say, the daddy saw him. Not the, the preacher of the school or the trustee or the choir, but it says his daddy saw him. And his daddy told him to come, come and say, Dad went out to meet him. And then his dad told all his servants, I, I know he got a failure on his record, but start, start slipping that up right there. I know he's done this, I know he's I know she's done that, but I need you to start fixing things up and, and open doors that folks couldn't make to get open. I know they go and drink their liver, but I need you to start doing some miraculous things in their life. But his daddy starts scraping everything up, get there, and say, put a ring on his finger. David. Oh, you preaching that preacher. The king of the nation of Israel. Bring it down, bring it down. David yes, sir. was humble so low. He turned to God and said, God have mercy on me. Because if nothing else, I got enough sense to know that as long as I have breath in my body, you got enough love to forgive me. He says, I know you have great compassion. You don't judge me for what you saw me doing. Folk might judge me. That's why I can't pass the game to the doctor. Doctor St. Augustine, and they're, oh, run, 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 run. Oh, run, run, run. Well, if one brother say he thought I could walk on water, I could have said no, oh, but in Gainesville, this thing ain't like this. In Gainesville, they know the other one. And he said, I know you have great compassion when other folk don't have compassion. And I know that you can blot out the stain of my sin. King David, he came to a place where he pleaded for mercy. And then in verse 2, he's specific on how he wants God to extend mercy. He said, God, I know you have mercy. I know that you can do it. And this is what I need you to do. He says, I want you to wash me clean from my guilt. Yeah. I'm tired of hurting. I'm, I'm tired of going through. I'm tired of struggling. I've I, I even come to the church and, and, I, and, and I know that I did wrong, but, but, but I can't, can't really find true joy because, because I, I still feel guilty for all the mess I did. Yes, sir. I still feel guilty for all the people that I hurt. I still feel guilty for all the folk that I led astray. I, this woman was at her own house, minding her own business, and I went and had this woman to come to me, and, and then I went and had her husband killed, and I did all of these things. And even when she had a baby, the baby died. All these things because of me, and it's killing me. It's hurting me, God. But if you can just wash, wash me clean from my guilt, God. It's killing me that somebody here sitting here right now. God forgave you. But you still killing yourself. Come on, preacher. preacher. You still struggling and wrestling with stuff that God has forgiven you for. Yeah. You still wrestling because you think that that person that, that you you think you did it to them. Uh -huh. You think you did it to them. Come on, preacher. Preacher. Then he said, he said, God. If you wash me clean from my guilt, and if you can convince me that I'm purified from my sins, I, I keep dragging this big ball of sin around, and, and I, I, I can't, I can't go like you tell me to go. The joy that your scriptures speak of, I, I don't have that joy. I'm always sad. I'm always going through. I'm, I'm always guilty. I, I see folks that I led wrong and they died out there, and all of this guilt is on top of me. I call my child victim and crush the spirit. I ran my spouse into the ground. And she lost her mind. I convinced my husband that he was a nobody and no good. And, and he went back out there and had him drunk and killed himself. I've done so much wrong. And I can't seem to get it out my head every time I try to praise you. If now he's at my mind, he said, God, if you can wash me clean from my guilt. He says, if you can purify me of my sin. He said, God, I'm just going to be transparent. I'm going to be open with you. In verses 3 through 6, he said, I recognize my, my shameful deeds. They haunt me day and night. I used to think about all the, all the women that I had doing so many crazy things when I was out 
there. And, 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 and when I first came to God, it, 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 I said, now I got myself right, but now I got all led all these women and bitches too stupid stuff. And now some of them have picked up attitudes and behaviors that, that probably got something to do with me. And he says, it's haunting me day and night. And then in verse 4, he goes on it. He says, but you know what? I ain't sinned against nobody but you, God. Amen. I got it. I know I hurt Bathsheba. I know what's wrong with it did with her, with her husband Uriah. I know what I, it was wrong that I did with that person or that person or that person, but I sinned against one person. Somebody needs to come to that understanding now. You cussed me out, but you didn't sin against me. You sinned against God. You ran out and ducked and dodged in the midnight hour with that man husband or that woman wife or that man, oh, oh Lord. That's a whole other sermon right there. With, with that man woman or that husband, that, that how y'all want to talk about it. You went and, 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 and did what you did. But it wasn't them you were sinning against. And David said, you know, God, I finally came to the point. This thing has hurt me so bad. But now I'm about at the point of being able to be restored because I finally realized that even though it was wrong, what I did to everybody else out there, the sin was against you. Amen. And so even though I went and asked them for forgiveness, because they didn't forgive me, it's still nothing for me to drag around. He said, I sinned against you and you alone. He says, I've done what's evil in your sight. And you will be proved right in what you say. And your judgment against me is just. David comes to the point and said, I deserve death. The Bible says that the wages of sin, they, they stop making excuses. And that's the point that we have to come to in our life. Stop making excuses. Yeah, right. Saying, I know I did this, but I know I did. God, I did it. And I deserve to be dealt with. If this is what your word says, God, I deserve. I'm not trying to shut it out. I made a mistake and, and I'm asking for your mercy. But in no way am I going to try to say that if you judge me justly, that you're wrong. If I have to lose everything I have, God, you're still God. If I have to go down and be laid down flat on my back, I'll never blame you, God. You're still God. And besides you, there is none of them. And David says, he says, your judgment will be just. He said, because I realize I stepped down off of this pedestal. I became a king, became a king, and I forgot where I came from. I, I, I came to some status huh, and forgot where I came from. Huh. There's some folk right now living a good life. Huh. Things are going fine, huh. but don't forget where you come from. Huh. This life ain't always been that good. Huh. You ain't always been able to eat every lunch time. Huh. You ain't been able to eat, do everything you want to do. Huh. God has made ways. Huh. Some of you didn't come over here. Come over here. Huh. Only me and the sense of the real order here too. Huh.
that I came from sin, I was born in the sin. Thank God that you touched me and you anointed me. But God, I'm being real. And he says, and I know you desire for us to be honest. Right now, God is desiring for some folk that's got a front up. And that you ain't never done nothing wrong. I'm sorry, but I ain't never to the teachers. And that you have never done anything wrong. I'm, I'm sorry. He says, I want you to be real with me. Admit your weaknesses. Admit your faults. He said, I can't be strong in you until you become weak. As long as you still trying to be Mr. Mr. Knowing all that, as long as you trying to be superwoman, he said, I can't be strong in you. Until he said, it's in your weakness where my strength is revealed. David said, he said, I was rebellious. I think that's verse 3. I think in verse 3 he said, I, 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 I was rebellious. And you know rebellion is, a, is witchcraft. That's, that's witchcraft. He said, I, 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 I was rebellious. And then he said, that, and then I sinned against you and you alone. And he said, I was even born into sin. But I know you can change me. Amen. I know you can do it, God. I, I know you can change me. And in 7 through 13, David begins to cry out for complete restoration. I'm just admitting it. I'm, I'm putting everything out there. I don't care what they say about me. That's why I don't care about telling my testimony. You can say what you want to say, but I, I'm anointed. You can talk like you want to talk, but, but I'm appointed. You, 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 can, you can do what you want to do, but no weapon formed against me won't break down my body. And David said, I'm just being real with you. I'm the king. He said, I was rebellious. I sinned against you, God. I admit I was born in the sin. But he said, God, I need complete restoration. And some of us, in order to get complete restoration, we got to go ahead and pull the facade down and be real. You know what? I messed some things up. There are some things that I shouldn't have done that I did. There's somebody that saw you do it. And they still hung up and trying because you're trying to act like you didn't do it. God said, go ahead and be real huh? and admit that you was messed. Huh? David cried out huh, for complete restoration. He said, purify me, God, huh, of my sins, huh, and I will be made clean. Huh? David said, God, if you purify me, huh, I know I can be made clean. Huh? I'm at the point now huh, to where if you speak it into my life, huh, I'm going to walk. Like I'm going to stop making excuses, huh? talking about I'm only human. Huh? If you said I'm in head, huh? if you said I can do all things, huh? I'm going to stand up. Huh? Dr. King said, huh? the only way a man can ride your back huh? is when it's built over. Huh? And the only way the devil can ride your back huh? when it's built over. Huh? Stand up huh? and say, God, huh? if you purify me, huh? I will be clean. Huh? David went on to say, as dirty as I am, from all the mess I've done, if you wash me, I stop being whiter than snow. See, that faith right there, all the mess I've done, I ain't listening to man now, but with all the mess I've done, I believe that if God wash me, I'll be whiter. Give me back my joy 
for life, uh, that's an example. Uh, if you restore me, uh, I'll go back and teach the sinners, uh, and they will return to you. Uh, I won't get my salvation uh, and keep it to myself. Uh, but I'll produce more Christians. I'll evangelize. Uh, I won't sit out there in the streets uh, and be afraid to say, say your name. Uh, I won't be ashamed of you before me. Uh, I'll let folk know uh, Jesus did it. Uh, man, how you get out there mess? Uh, Jesus did it. Uh, girl, how you stand up now? Uh, Jesus did it. Uh, I remember you were down. Uh, well, look at me now. Uh, Jesus did it. Uh, say yeah. Say yeah. He said, I'll go uh, and I'll bring them back to you. Uh, but then he closed it out. Uh, and he says, forgive me for shedding blood. Uh, he says, oh, God uh, who sings, uh, then I will joyfully sing uh, of your forgiveness. Uh, he said, God, uh, if you do this thing for me, uh, he said, God, uh, if you do it for me, uh, he said, God, I'll stand out uh, and let the world know. Uh, I told y'all earlier uh, about a ringtone. Uh, I said, it's the sound uh, that you cause to come uh, that lets folk know uh, and let you know uh, who you are. Uh, let you know uh, that that's yours. Uh, he says, God, uh, if you let me back in the house, uh, he says, uh, I'll begin to make a sound. Uh, in verse 15, uh, he says, uh, unseal my lips. Uh, he said, oh, Lord, uh, and I'll praise you. Uh, he said, Lord, uh, if you restore me, uh, if you unseal my lips, uh, then I'll praise you. Uh, Yeah, yeah. It was against God and God only that you sinned. It can make that the rain 
keep on. And there also might be someone in here that wants to become a part of the St. Paul family. If you want to get it right and become a part of the St. Paul family, I want you to come and kneel to the altar. The altar is still on. The altar is still on. Come now, come now, come now. Be real about it. Be real about it. You, you know what you need. Stop being trans. Stop, stop trying to be only oh, yeah, It ain't together. Come on, it ain't together. Come near down this altar. Let's get it right. If you want to get it right with God and you want to make St. Paul your church home, come and kneel down at the altar. Now I'm about to shut it down. Don't, don't wait after the benediction come. I wish. You say you don't play around. You might not get a chance to see next Sunday. Come take care, take advantage of it now. Is there another before we begin to, to talk to my brothers and sisters at the altar? Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Pray that you were blessed by our ministry at St. Paul TV. St. Paul TV is a production of the Media and Technology Ministry of St. Paul AME Church, 85 Martin Luther King Avenue, St. Augustine, Florida. And if you were blessed, I want you to go and make a difference in this world. Make God proud of you. If you have a church home, go and make a difference in your church. If you're in need of a church home, a place to where you can be nourished and fed, ask that you strongly consider making St. Paul AME Church your church home. promise you, you won't be disappointed. Now, if you believe in reaping and sowing, we invite you to be financial partners with St. Paul AME Church. This is good ground. And if you'd like to sow into this ministry, please visit our website at stpaulfamily.com and click on the Make a Contribution list. Remember, no matter where you have been, where you are, or where you're going, there is a place for you at St. Paul AME Church. <laughs>